Good morning, happy Sabbath. So we've already talked about the eight laws of health as new start, vitamin D, prayer, and antioxidants as integral to our whole body health. I have another yet uh, non-pill prescription that has been proven to benefit health in a similar to strong way, but yet this therapy doesn't cost a single dime. Can anybody guess what that is? It's laughter. So laughter has shown universal positive health benefits that even naysayers who squabble over the degree of benefit and ask for more studies can't argue that even if modest, the study significant benefits outweigh any risk, which is none. Did you hear that? There is no side effects to laughter. And this makes it the prescription um, a strong one for our health. So what are the benefits? Well, it relieves stress. It actually decreases your stress hormones, the epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. It increases your endorphins, which these are the chemicals that protect against pain by acting through the same, very same opioid receptors that suggest that laughter can produce as much euphoria as narcotics, but obviously without the drawbacks. It induces uh, Im immediate increase in your heart rate, your respiratory rate, and your depth of breathing, as well as your oxygen consumption, which then, this decreases your arteriovascular inflammation, which also prevents plaque. Oh, sorry, and it, this actually, I've got the wrong, wrong sentence. So this actually will um, increase your, induce your muscles to relax, which then will decrease your heart rate, your respiratory rate, and your blood pressure. It also improves the cardiovascular health, which we were just talking about. Um, it, was, it increases your good cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol, and it decreases your arteriovascular inflammation, which then prevents plaque, and that in turn prevents cardio, um, stroke and heart attacks. The Journal of National Cancer Institute actually found that it improves your immune function by mobilizing your uh, immune cells, such as your natural killer cells, and activating your T cells, which then this increases your resistance to disease, so you don't get you know, um, sick as often, and it decreases the symptoms and the morbidity of um, such diseases such as cancer and HIV. Um, some studies show that 50% of cancer patients use humor, but multiple big name medical facilities such as Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, Harvard, Vanderbilt, and Loma Linda and others have proven that benefits of laughter are useful in multiple medical specialties such as geriatrics, oncology, critical care medicine, psychiatry, rehabilitation, uh, rheumatology, surgery, palliative care, terminal home hospice, and general medicine, and near and dear to my heart, pediatrics. Perhaps some of you you guys might actually remember the famous pediatrician Dr. Patch Adams and the Gesundheit Institute who made this very famous laughter therapy as a medical therapy for the kids. A 14th century French surgeon, Henri de Montlevaux, um, used laughter as a form of anesthesia and post-surgical recovery. There is a study that's, uh, that shows that patients who watch comedy needed less pain meds than those who were watching other types of videos. And when laughing in a group setting, it actually increases our pain threshold up to noxious stimuli, such as extreme colds, so that we can actually bear the pain easier if we already have laughter um, as, our, as our prescription. It actually burns calories. Did you know that? You can actually burn between 10 to 50 calories per, for every 10 to 15 minutes of deep laughing. So even though it's not going to really take over our exercise, it still can help us burn calories. Um, it actually makes us smarter, and it boosts our memory. People, they found that people who are watching funny videos actually increase their performance in tasks involving memory and problem solving. It actually helps us with social bonding. These endorphins that are released in a group setting actually increase a feelings, feelings of togetherness and increase our sense of safety. It helps us cope with distressing situations such as catastrophic events, embarrassing faux pas, and chronic disease. They've actually found that um, it actually helps us in our mating relationships as well. Women laugh 126% more than men, but men tend to instigate the laughter. So this is the reason why women tend to put the sense of humor on their top three traits for potential mate, and men tend to look for women who laugh a lot, or at least laugh at their jokes. Studies show that couples who laugh together rate higher quality of relationships. 
And isn't it nice that once, I mean, that laughter is so contagious. And so once you actually see someone laughing or hear someone laughing, you just can't help but laugh as well. So we all share the health benefits. So every study needs lab time, right? So let's look at some specimens. If we can have our slide, please. This is my favorite part. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So some people that think that icy is easiest word to spell. Now that I think about it, I see why. <laughs> what did the gra green grape say to the purple grape? Breathe, friend, breathe. I couldn't figure out why the baseball kept getting bigger. Then it hit me. <laughs> that one actually made me laugh, too, when I was looking at it on the internet. See how laughing is contagious? Which rock, boot ha which rock group has four guys which can't sing or play instruments? Mount Rushmore. What did the hat say to the tie? You hang around, I'll go on ahead. What happens when two bullets get married? They have BBs. I used to be addicted to the hokey pokey, but then I turned myself around. <laughs> knock, knock, who's there? Little old lady, little lady who? I didn't know you could yodel. And then laughing, the COVID edition. I used to spin that toilet paper like I was on the Wheel of Fortune. Now I turn, turn it like I'm cracking a safe. I just saw a man driving alone, windows all rolled up, and he had a mask on. This morning I saw a neighbor talking to her cat. It was obvious she thought that her cat understood her. I came into my house and told my dog, and we laughed a lot. I have absorbed so much hand sanitizer, hand soap, and disinfectant wipes that when I urinate, I also clean my toilet. People are walking around stores with full face, full on face, uh, ski face masks, and employers are not calling the police. Isn't it strange how truer than, um, truer than fiction actually is funny sometimes? I need to practice social distancing from my refrigerator. Homeschooling is going well. So far, two students were suspended for fighting, and the other one stated, I hope I don't get the same teacher next year. I'm so excited. It's time to take out the garbage. What should I wear? And my personal favorite, please don't judge me, but I had to put this in. Riddle me this. You're an American when you enter a bathroom. You're American when you exit a bathroom. But what are you while you're in the bathroom? <laughs> European. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but getting back to a more serious note, I want to bring your attention to what medical research is now proving was already given to us thousands of years ago in the Bible. And we find that in Proverbs 17:22. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. So I guarantee you, my friends, as our wonderful creator God made us, he knows what is best for us and for our optimal health. And he wants to tell us about it, too. We just have to listen. May we all focus especially on the joy, joyful this week. God bless.